Department of Corrections carried out the court-ordered sentence of Benjamin Cole, who was convicted of murder in the first degree. Inmate Cole declined the ceremonial last meal and was instead served the same dinner as other OSP inmates at 7.30 p.m. on October 19th. He also declined to exercise his option to have a spiritual advisor with him in the chamber today. The execution process began at 10.06 a.m. Cole was declared unconscious at 10.11 a.m. and was pronounced deceased at 10.22 a.m. We recognize that today's events impact many people on many different levels, especially those who mourn the victim. Today our thoughts and prayers are with the family and friends of Brianna Cole. It is responsibility of the Oklahoma Department of Corrections to carry out the orders of the court in accordance with state statute. The agency has done so today with absolute professionalism and respect for the process, ensuring dignity for all involved. Do you have any questions? So the process started about four minutes uh, after 10. Is that because of the U.S. Supreme Court? Waiting on him to rule? No, uh, it slowed us up a little bit. We gave him the option whether to walk to the to the chamber or to uh, uh, be wheeled in in a wheelchair. He chose that, and it took just a few minutes longer. So he chose to come in in a wheelchair? Yes, sir. Uh, the executions have been described by the I would use that without I'm uneventful and uh, without any complications. Are there any other questions? Did, was he able to get on the bed himself? Well, he's restrained, so no. I mean, uh, no inmates, no matter the physical, are, are able to get on the bed themselves. They're, they're, with the restraints, they're helped onto the bed. Was the acting uh, HU section chief going to be identified? Or no, as a, as you know, uh, they have the uh, the option to self-identify. We're not going to identify. I'll be stepping into that role as the new director steps into this one uh, for the next one. Can you tell us who the uh, dignitaries were at all? I mean, we obviously know Dr. Kent was there, but anybody else? Can you answer that question? I don't know. I don't have, uh, I don't have the dignitaries list. I'll make sure Josh gets back with you for that. That it? Thank you. I've been given word that two uh, family members of the victim wish to appear today and speak. We'll be joined by Brian Young, uh, the uncle of the victim, and Donna Daniel, who was the aunt of the victim, and they'll be here shortly. Dr. Brian Young from Muskogee, and I am uh, Brianna's uncle. This is my sister Donna Daniel. She's from Broken Arrow. It's Brianna's aunt. aunt. You can. We want to thank the state today for taking care of our family finally 
and we would like the media to help advocate for victims in getting justice. We should not have to wait 20 years for a nine-month-old baby to get her justice. He should have been executed many years ago. And we had to endure this nightmare for all this time. So we would appreciate anything that could happen to advocate for victims and their rights instead of making it all about the perpetrator, perpetrator who actually got more news coverage and everything than Brianna did. She was a nine month old baby. She had blonde hair, blue eyes. And my son is 21 now and she would have been 20 and they never got to even meet. And she died a horrific death. This man abused her prior to what he did to kill her and he gets off easy and gets to get a little injection in his arm and go to sleep in his death. And he did not give Brianna the chance to even grow up, to even have her first Christmas, to meet her family. My first experience with Brianna, because I lived in Texas at the time, is seeing her in her casket. I never got to see her alive. And he killed her five days before Christmas. We were coming home for Christmas and we were supposed to get to see her. And this is what I came home to. So anything that we can do to advocate for the victim and not the perpetrator, that's what our family would like to see happen. And Brianna finally has justice today. Our family has justice today and we do not have to deal with this anymore. Yeah, this is justice for Brianna day. This is her day. I, I was impressed with the Department of Corrections, how they handled it. I, I, I just, I, our family is not one that's ever been inside a prison. And so kudos to them for the way they handled it and treated us. Um, it's very professional and uh, he, su he did not suffer. That's no. that's what I kept thinking in my mind. What she went through, he didn't have anything like that. You know, uh, to other families uh, of victims like this, given all that you've been through these twenty some years, and you talk about the pain that it comes with, you know, seeing all the attention focused on him. Do you, do you give some thought to at the beginning if you can go back in time and choose? Settled for a life without parole and never have to hear his name and never have to think about him again? I would not have. No, not me. Think it's worth it. Yes. We think it's worth it. And, and, and it's, it's, it goes to the back burner, so you, have, you don't think about it. And then when it starts getting closer to something, everything, everybody brings it up again. Mm -hmm. See, we, this is the second time we've gone through this process. Mm -hmm. He was scheduled. Six six years ago, seven years ago, in 2015, he, he had should have died. he had two clemency hearings, and he was already had another execution date, so it, it should have already been finished. What's next for your family? Now that this has carried out. What's next for your family? <laughs> Go back to normal. That's normal as it can be. Yeah. I mean. I mean that's. We have this little girl that we never got to know. We didn't get to see grow up. And she will always be a part of our family. But um, we will have to move forward and, and just go on without her. What do you think about all this talk about Jesus and stuff in the last statement? He, I was not at his trial, but he did a lot of the Jesus stuff at trial. He would show up with a Bible in hand, and to me, it was just a prop for him. To me, there is only one judge, and it is not me. Yeah. Do you spell your first name B-R-Y-A-N? Correct. Ma'am, how do you spell your name? D-O-N-N-A-D-A-N-I-E-L. 
Ariana's mother was her sister. Yes. And is she still alive? Yes. yes. You had a question. I was going to ask about the prayer. Um, he, there was talk that he is, he's unable to talk to his attorney, his um, spiritual advisor, and yet it was a very long, drawn out prayer. I was wondering what you all thought of that. My thought is it just proved that he's been faking this all along. And his attorneys, even up to today, was were trying to get him uh, clemency. He, he knew exactly what he's doing the whole time. He, he tries to manipulate. He had everybody fooled, or he thought he had everybody fooled. And uh, I, I didn't think he would even say anything today, so I was surprised. But that's just kind of part of his He's a user. Mantra. He's a user. He used people. Uh, he used our sister. She did not have the mental capacity to determine who a friend is, who a, a true partner would be. And he used her. And he wouldn't force her to work. In, in my opinion, he, he's a narcissist. And he, he has to control. And he would send her around to the various charities to get food for them so that he didn't have to work and he could sit home and play video games. And Brianna cried and interrupted his video game and he killed her. That's, that's the whole reason she's dead. And she had been abused from him before the coroner's re uh, autopsy report. You know, they found bruises and uh, the, like the little piece inside her mouth had been broken and, and the only way that could have happened is she had to be hit in the mouth and my sister um, would never have harmed a child she would never uh, never she loved that little girl how's your sister feeling have you talked to her today i have not spoken with her today but she made a promise to her daughter 20 years ago that she would see justice for Brianna and so that came to fruition today so she, did she witness no we did not no allow her we we it was best that she did not yes. go well, you I haven't really thought about that yet yeah uh, that's probably a good idea, and we very well may entertain that. Yeah. Um, and it would be something advocating victims' rights. That's just that's just been on my heart. Uh, I get emotional thinking about it. But that that just that has what has eaten me up through this whole process is the victims are put down here, out of out of pocket, out of sight. They they're never brought up. Anytime you hear anything regarding this, just like this execution, nothing much said about her. It was always about him. And that is not right. Uh, to me, these perpetrators, when they do their crime and when they're convicted by a jury of their peers, they have lost their rights. They should have no more rights. It's over. It should be done. And the will of the people should be carried out. And you know, I, I haven't entertained this, but I'm gonna to talk to my legislators and I want to see if there is something that we can do to make this be a, a faster process. Because 20 years, give me a break, he, he admitted to it. Uh, and there was no question about this. So it, it should have been done a long time ago. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Yes, Brianna, Brianna was named after uh, myself and my ex-wife. My ex-wife was Vicki, and, and I was Brian, so it was Brianna Victoria. So that's why I have a special place in my heart. Thank you very much. Th thank you, guys. We appreciate you.
At this time, we'll hear from our five media witnesses. We'll start with Sean Murphy from the Associated Press. Uh, so, um, Sean Murphy with the AP. There were um, six media witnesses, obviously. There were also six uh, what they call um, dignitaries, I, I believe a couple of prosecutors, uh, Dr. Yen, who, uh, an anesthesiologist, who's been witnessing these on behalf of the AG's office. Um, the curtain was raised at 10.04 a.m. Um, Mr. Cole was obviously uh, on the gurney, arms outstretched with a uh, um, IV running into his left arm. Um, he had long hair, long beard, uh, and mustache. He had on a, a gray prison shirt. And um, the death warrant was read by the acting H unit uh, section chief. And um, uh, Mr. Cole was asked if he had any last words, and he actually did deliver a two minute uh, uh, a bit of a, uh, at times, incoherent. He spoke very softly and, and kind of in a high-pitched voice. Um, some of the things that he said, I wasn't able to get everything, but uh, the Lord is my personal Lord and Savior, or the Lord Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. Uh, choose Jesus while you still can. I pray you receive my spirit. Keep your eyes peeled for Jesus. Be ready at all times. The day of the Lord is at hand. And he, he also offered up a prayer for the state of Oklahoma and this great nation. Um, and he also said, I forgive everyone that I have done wrong. Um, and that uh, went on for about, about two minutes. Uh, the chief asked him if he was, um, had concluded his last words and he said, yes, sir. And then the, uh, about 10.06, the drug started to, uh, the first uh, drug, midazolam, started to flow. Um, he exhaled heavily. His lips and mouth continued to move. It was difficult to see if he was uh, trying to speak because the mic had been cut off at this point. Uh, but there was definitely some movement with his lips. You could see the, his beard uh, kind of fluttering. Chest uh, was heaving. At 10.07, his eyes opened and his mouth opened. He, he yawned at 10.08. Um, at 10.10, he appeared to... He was taking kind of short, almost gaspy breaths. Um, at 10.11, the doctor came in to check him for consciousness, shook him, pinched his arm, and at 10.12, he was de declared to be unconscious. You, we could hear him snoring in the background. Uh, but so then the second drug started uh, flowing. Uh, right around 10.13, 10.14, he appeared to stop breathing. His chest uh, appeared to stop moving. I did see his fingers twitch slightly at 1014. That was the last movement that I saw. Um, the doctor came in at 1022. The doctor was hooded. Uh, he used a stethoscope, shined a light in his eyes, and uh, declared the time. Uh, actually, Justin Ferris, the chief of operations, uh, who you just heard from, declared him dead at 1022. So. Um, you know, having witnessed uh, several midazolam executions has seemed to be very similar with the, you know, the breathing, the hitched breathing and the uh, fluttering of the mouth and uh, in terms of the length of time that it took, it was um, similar to previous executions. So. Any questions? Uh, no, just the, the comment about forgiveness. Uh, but, but he, he said, he f I forgive everyone that I have done wrong, is what he said. He called it a prayer? Is it a prayer? Uh, I mean, it's, I, I guess, maybe a religious-themed uh, commentary. Yeah. It was kind of rambling at times and also uh, tough to discern exactly what he was saying. All right, thanks. I just want to clarify for Sean. I know you, it was just a misspoken thing. There's five media witnesses, not six. Oh, just want to clarify on that. As you can see, all five are here. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Nolan Clay from the Oklahoman.
Uh, Sean summarized it pretty pretty well. Uh, I would. Uh, it's uh, the fourth execution I've seen in the, in the last year, and uh, I, I agree with what the uh, chief of operations said. It seemed to be pretty smooth, pretty uncomplicated. It was about the same length as the other ones I've seen. Uh, I would characterize uh, uh, what the inmate said at the, in his final words as a prayer. I pray that he be yours too after he declared Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And, he talked about keeping your eyes peeled, be ready at all times. He said in the name of Jesus, you know, I pray that you receive my spirit as I forgive everyone that I have done wrong, which didn't really make much sense, but uh, it was kind of stream of consciousness a little bit. Uh, I saw his body shake around uh, 10.08, right after his eyes opened, but it was a uh, slight shake. And other than that, the hitched breathing, the snoring when they turned on the mic to declare that, that he was unconscious. Uh, it was the same doctor that's been uh, there every time. And, uh, and it took, again, about the, about the same amount of time as it has before. It began a few minutes, as the chief of operations said, a few minutes. Uh, they usually begin like right at 10 o'clock or 10.01. This one, I, the clock said 10.04. Any questions? We'll now hear from Caitlin Ogle from KFOR. I don't have that much to add, but I do agree with Sean and Nolan. It did seem, his prayer did seem more like a stream of consciousness and kind of rambling on. At times he was very raspy and sometimes it was almost a whisper. So it was very hard to get all of the words. Again, a lot of them didn't really make sense. And his hands, I was, obviously the left is uh, closest to us, but I watched and it kind of kept him like this, like this on the, Gurney, and um, up until 1014, they remained still. Uh, the parts in his prayer that I jotted down was, choose Jesus while you still can, and I pray you receive my spirit as I forgive everyone that I have done wrong. And um, I guess the only other thing I would add was the ski mask that the uh, doctor was wearing was blue. Any questions? Our next media witness is Adrian O'Hanlon from the McAllister News Capital. Not a whole lot to add. Uh, agree with everything they said. Um, Stop breathing at 1014. The, the shaking I thought was more of like a shiver trembling, but um, not much else to add. Any questions? And our last media witness this morning is Andy Weber from KOCO. So I'm just going to read through what I had for that speech or for the prayer. He said, Lord Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior, and I pray that he is yours too. I'm paraphrasing this because I had to only caught parts of it. As you mentioned, it was only it's tough to tell what he was saying. Uh, choose Jesus. Keep him first in every aspect of your life. Um, day of the Lord is at hand in the name of Jesus. Um, he prayed for Oklahoma, prayed for this great nation, and uh, he prays that. Honestly, I can't remember my handwriting. I was kind of rushing through it. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I also at 10:08 uh, there was a somewhat of a light body shudder. Um, then starting around 10:14, uh, I almost I had or 10:16 actually I had zero movement. Through his, throughout his body, zero movement completely. That's all I have. Any questions? That's all we have for this morning. If there are any questions from any of you all or anything we can help with, please uh, let us know. Uh, the time now is 11.15. I know some of you have 11.30 live shots to do. Um, I'm going to ask 
that everyone is outside of the gate by 11.30, I'm sorry, 11.40. That'll give you uh, 25 minutes to pack up and, and we, so we can return safely to uh, normal prison operations. Will you be able to get those dignitaries here after a while? I'll, yes, I'll go find that list and, and we'll... So call you or why email me or why? Yeah, I'll call you. Thank you.